Hello and welcome to Basel Tov, the courage and cre- creativity of ADHD. I'm Jen. I'm Ellen. And I'm Annette. And we are here again to discuss more lovely ADHD topics that plague us all. All of us. Woo! Okay, just some of us, but whatever. So today we're talking about <laughs> impulse control, something I've already shown a glaring lack of during this podcast. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we're... We're here, I mean, impulse control is very broadly defined, first of all. It's just Mm -hmm. basically taking some kind of action and not thinking about it. That's it. Yay. Super Mm -hmm. easy to understand. Not thinking about the future repercussions of your actions. Exactly. So no consequences. Yeah. Action without foresight. Isn't that what it says? Yeah, Yeah. that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Earlier, before we started recording this, I swore that that was easy to remember, and then I completely forgot by the time we hit record. So, you know, (laughs) whatever. It's an ADHD moment. (laughs) That's right. How apropos. Yep, totally appropriate. So we're, um, yeah, so impulse control. That's where we are. Um, (laughs) Or lack thereof. Gotta love those impulses. So many impulses, man. Yeah, that's that's the thing is I'm not really sure how we're going to like wrap this one up in a neat, tidy package today because <laughs> impulse so control can literally affect your entire life. It can in- affect any portion of your life in unpredictable ways. So maybe... How fun. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's just best if we start talking about our own experiences with impulse control since we represent the three types of ADHD. Um, so, Ellen, <laughs> what, what's your what's your impulse control story? Oh, God. OK, well, I'm Miss Inattentive type here. Uh, you know, as you know, I don't do a ton of overthinking. I mostly uh, sort of see pictures in my brain not not a lot of like thoughts coming in but uh, i will tell you those impulsive thoughts that do enter your brain they are clear as day you know and uh so i i can think of all kinds of situations in my life like you were saying impulse control affects literally everything every decision you make and Mm -hmm. we're also people that are very easily distracted too and so when they you know Uh when an impulse does come up it's really hard to not uh I think about it sometimes, but uh, I would say the two that I struggle with the most have been impulsive spending and impulsive eating. Uh, you know, I know we're also going to talk about impulsive talking too. You know, that happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but me. You know, I I I will say that I, I'm not much of a planner. You know, like I'm a pretty uh, easygoing person that doesn't really schedule out my day, and so. When an impulsive thought does come in my head, like, oh, you should just do that thing instead of what you were doing before, it's pretty easy for me to switch gears and just do what I want to do. And so, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, I don't have dinner planned out until mm-hmm. 15 minutes before <laughs> I'm supposed to start. <laughs> or, uh, you know, so it, so if I have a thought like, oh, I'm just going to order pizza, you know, it's pretty easy for me to just follow that impulse and do it. Mm-hmm. But if I feel like if I had a plan... Maybe that would stop me. I'm sure we're going to talk about how you can prevent these impulses from controlling your life. But, you know, what about Mm -hmm. you guys? I know you're a little better at planning than me. Do you feel like that helps things at all? (laughs) No. (laughs) Sure. And that's shaking your head. No. I'm not a... I don't know why people think I have my life all together because I have nothing together. Uh, You're busy as fuck, though. (laughs) Yes. And I'm busy as fuck. And that makes me do the next thing. It's like, I can't not do the next thing. So Uh (laughs) it push my life pushes me. But when it comes to making plans with my girlfriends or vacation plans or planning out something for a party that's coming up, uh, I'm really bad about pinning it down and like giving people dates and giving people times and giving people places mm. like where where should we go what should we do and so i'm the kind of person who goes on vacation i'm like oh, i got my ticket now what? <laughs> <laughs> you know now which what? is exciting <laughs> mm-hmm. that is you know exciting. It, it's exciting but it's like i don't have anything planned out ever and then uh even for the my english school's christmas party and halloween party about 90% of it is put together in the two weeks before the party. 
So that's um, better than the night before. <laughs> yeah, and yes. as you said, because you're the you're you're the inattentive type, and I'm the hyperactive type. I have intrusive thoughts like constantly, but I have mm-hmm. all the thoughts constantly. My mind doesn't shut mm-hmm. up, and uh, you know I've mentioned that I have anxiety, and that's part of that too. Um, but yeah. I can come up with ideas and new things to do just off off the top of my head. And uh, I've had a lot of my English teachers, you know, past and present, that look at me and be like, how do you do that? Like, how do you make a new game <laughs> in like 20 <laughs> minutes before a class starts? Or you just pull random things out of drawers and make something happen in the middle of class that you did not plan. And it's just my talent. I pull it out my yeah. ass <laughs> like, yep. yeah so Captain i'm not a planner it's what we do yeah i'm not a planner and you know i have to i give myself a pat on the back because as much as i'm not a planner i've still been able to get this podcast updated on time every week so far yeah yes you've been amazing yeah it's been know. harrowing <laughs> yeah. it's like oh shit Jen, what about you Jen, Jen, how do you, you're, you're not like a huge planner either, right? I mean, oh, I thought Annette was more no. organized than she is. So you've, <laughs> I mean, been, you've been faking it this whole time. <laughs> well, okay, so combined type ADHD here. <laughs> That's the preface, I'll preface with that. Um, I, I feel like, like Annette is onto something here. If you just stack your schedule with so many things that you don't have breathing room, you'll you'll be busy and you'll just accomplish a lot because one thing will be dependent upon another. So if you fail one thing, the stakes are high and you're like, oh, can't do that. So then you just drag yourself through all of them. And people are commonly like, I don't know how you do it. I, how are you doing these things? And I'm just like, I don't even know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> like, Because to me, it seems like a goddamn miracle that I got it all done. Um, so it's, yeah, I think it's just making the stakes high enough. But my impulse control stories are so many. Um, <laughs> just, oh, my God. <laughs> So I mean they happen every they happen every day. How are how are we supposed to pick one story? Yeah, I know, right? Like what is What's your this? biggest impulse I... control story? Well, oh, or lack I know, thereof. Probably probably bringing a pretty controversial sex toy onto a podcast. Um, Ooh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> there was that one. And then there was the, uh, the other day when I broke down literally sobbing because I felt like I couldn't adult anymore. And I was like, mm. oh, my God, I can never fold laundry. What is it with me and folding laundry? My whole life, <laughs> I failed at folding laundry. I can wash clothes. I can dry clothes. I can put them away if they're already folded. But God damn it, if they're not folded, they sit in a pile somewhere. And it's been yep. the most absolutely galling thing. So I broke down and I was like, you know what? I'm not using a goddamn dresser anymore. And my absolutely saintly husband was like, okay. And just allowed me to pick him out of the closet so that I could just hang up all the clothes. And he's using dressers now. But it did solve the problem. <laughs> so, so what a guy. The problem. I know. He was such a good sport about it. And I was just apologizing profusely afterwards. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, can, I just, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> but, you know, it's the it's worst one like for that. me. Oh, sorry. Oh, the worst one for me recently was just a few months ago when I was at the car dealership getting maintenance on my car and I decided I don't like this car anymore. I'm going to sell it and lease a new one while I'm here, which I could. That was not financially wise at all, but (laughs) I did it. And a few hours later, I had a new car. <laughs> and then was Yay. like, what the fuck did I just do? I was, I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a classic question. I, you so know, what the, I, when what these. The fuck did I just do? <laughs> exactly. And, and when these impulses come into your brain, there's, I don't know, there's this side of me that's like this rebel that's like, yeah, yeah, fucking do it. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to, I have to adult myself. I have to parent myself and be like, no no (laughs) so your logical brain is the angel and your inability to control your impulses is your little devil on your shoulder 
Oh yeah, your impulse. Yeah, the impulse control is definitely the devil. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It usually so, doesn't lead to good things. Although uh, sometimes, uh, we should say sometimes when you have an impulsive thought, you do it. It can be a really good thing. You know, like you you yeah, just completely reorganized your clothes. Maybe that will be the best thing that's happened to you in a while, and it will completely change your life. Who knows? Yeah, I moved to a foreign what? country. I know, yeah, right? Yeah, Annette. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. We, we learned that Annette, Annette impulsively moved across the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got I got a divorce from my ex husband. I got a divorce and entered to finish my master's degree and uh, took the loan money to buy tickets to go to Japan in a span of about a week. Wait, so you didn't go to school? You just took that loan money and used Oh, it no, I went to school. Pay. I finished, I was oh, finished okay. my degree. Yeah, no, no, I I, I finished. <laughs> I, I did go to school. I did finish. But you I impulsively used... finished your master's and yes. then. Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, correction. That was my bachelor's degree that I finished. Oh, yeah, that's right. That. Gotcha. It was. That was my bachelor's degree. I remember degree. this. Okay. Uh, so... I, he, my ex-husband was getting his master's degree at that time. So mm. I was getting my match, my bachelor's degree and, uh, I had gotten all my undergraduate requirements done and I was just like, fuck it, I'll go back to school. And so I signed up for, uh, online classes to finish my bachelor's degree. And then I, uh, used the loan money and I applied for a language school in Japan the same week. <laughs> And uh, started getting all my information to get a student visa for studying Japanese. And then within six months, I moved to Japan. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It all, it all worked out. <clears throat> yeah. It was a good one. But yeah, people, mm -hmm. people always look at me like, are you crazy? And I'm like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know bit. I shared. I know I shared my story on maybe the last episode about how I recently reached out to like my my first boyfriend that we've reconnected since and yeah. it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. That was definitely an impulsive thought when I was just sitting in the yeah. airport and I was like, Ellen, why don't you just message him? It's been but it's been 25 years. Just do it. That was an impulsive thought. Just and do it. it turned do out it. To, yeah, I didn't think about it. I just did it. And uh, that turned out to be really great. So well, you never know. Yeah, sometimes being impulsive can be a superpower because it get it, yeah. you, you do things that other people would rationalize themselves out of. It's the yeah. it's the impulsive part uh, that gets you in trouble. That you know is not good. Like you know, people with ADHD or have a higher tendency towards. Uh, alcohol abuse drug abuse gambling probably gambling those, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> right um, all the yeah, fun those stuff. Are, yeah those are all I impulsive behaviors and like um i think next week we're going to talk about substance abuse so this is a good uh lean in to the next segue. podcast yeah yeah but yeah. because because of your uh in, in, the difficulty you know controlling your impulses it can lead you to do dangerous things or things that are Oh, bad yeah. Somebody you hands you, a, you another know, drink you and you're like, sure, why not? You know, when you told yourself, I'm only going to have one tonight, you know, but stop mm -hmm. looking at me. It's hard to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I think basically what I'm hearing is that ADHD is the fuck around and find out of mental health. Is this <laughs> what I'm hearing? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think it is. I think it might be. <laughs> yep. But, yep. But, it, you know, and, you know, I, uh, my father, my dad has ADHD. My mom, my mom doesn't, my sister has ADHD and I have ADHD and all three of us have this ability and to, you know, think outside the box and come to these conclusions or doing the fast thinking or, you know, those intrusive thoughts are actually like, so I wrote a song in the shower the other day, <laughs> oh, awesome. but I can't sing it because it's not appropriate. And um, oh dang yeah. it! But I have then you I have should these, do like, it. <laughs> no, uh, this is the impulsivity one. Like yeah, just do yeah. it. Yeah, just uh, fucking do it. But uh, yeah, it's you know. But those things, you know, those things that you hear in your life, things that you surround you, you know, you're influenced by those, and then just <laughs> in an impulse, it just kind of goes in in front of my face, and I'm just like, right. oh, 
that's good. And so I write it down. Yeah. 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 Uh, I love that. Yeah. Impulsivity yeah. does kind of, it, 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 you know, I love when it gets combined with creativity too, when you're working on something. I think like, it oh, is yeah. creativity. I think, yeah. I think it is part of creativity. I think that because Maybe the thing is. is, yeah, like when I'm, when I have, I don't know, like, I think with any form of writing, if it's songwriting or poetry or novel, novel writing, it doesn't matter. Like if you, if you have this idea, this feeling that you want to express, and then you just put it all down, you could jumble it all up and then come back and nitpick it later. Like it's just, you have to get it out. And that's a really impulsive kind of feeling. Like I have to let this thing exit my brain and you just impulsively write it down really fast. And then you come back to it later for like revisions and, and, you know, shaping and molding and fine tuning. But like a lot yeah. of, oh I think a lot of creativity is simply impulsivity in mm -hmm. disguise. Like a lot of the writing world is obsessed with <laughs> the troubles that writers face when they actually sit down to write. So like it, it, there are so many jokes about, you know, people not even writing, like they'll be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a novelist. Oh yeah. How many chapters do you have written? They're like, Oh, well, you know, I'm just going to go get some Chinese food now. Like <laughs> you know, they, they don't have a single word written. They're just like, it's all in their head. They're still chewing on it. And like, um, also problems with sitting still and writing for long enough problems with, you know, sitting and writing for hours and then thinking that you've written like 5,000 words and looking back and realizing it's only been 150 words that you've written and <laughs> like it, all of it just kind of screams ADHD to me. So I'm kind of wondering how many writers out there are afflicted with this, um, or maybe blessed you, by it. I don't that's know. That's a good question. Um, well, because even yeah, with yeah. songwriting, it's like you're just doing mm -hmm. something totally normal and it just like comes out of nowhere. It's not yeah. if I sit down, yeah. if I sit down at the piano or I sit down with a guitar, I, I'm like nothing, nothing happens. But, you know, I'll mm -hmm. get this something into my head all of a sudden. I'm like, ooh well, what are the chords to that? And I'll sit down and I'll be like, and then I have this whole song written in like 20 minutes. Yeah. So. Wow. That's awesome. Impulsivity yeah. is yeah. creativity. This is yeah, blowing maybe. my mind. Yeah. Well, part of it, I at least part of it. I think it's the part that allows you to run with it and at fearlessly. Well, another so. point though, another point is, is that if you're not impulsive, you will follow what everybody else does. You will do a formula that everybody else does. But what is creativity? Creativity is doing something different, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. So mm -hmm. yeah. you're acting sometimes, on an impulse to add this color. If you're an artist, you know, you're acting on an impulse to add this color instead of this color. And then that becomes art, right? God, that yeah. is so true. I when I when I was a baker and I did a lot of cake decorating, yeah, sometimes I would have impulse decisions like that. Like, you know what? I'm just gonna do this completely different. And it doesn't always work. <laughs> sometimes it fails. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes it's the greatest thing ever. And then people are like, Oh my god, how'd you come up mm -hmm. with that? And it's like, I don't know. It just it just popped <laughs> it came out brain. of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Literally yeah. nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got inspired, thought about yeah. doing it, just said, What the heck? I'm gonna do it, pull the trigger. Yeah, it was a make so or break just, moment. So <laughs> I guess we just need to incorporate a little logic when we hear these impulsive thoughts and uh, balance them mm -hmm. with the logic, you know? Is this a wise thing yeah. to do? <laughs> and I think you know? also hard. Like something, something that people in the creative realm are going to find really hard is like, whenever I, when I read suggestions about controlling impulsivity and, you know, trying to work around it, it makes me think that it's not for creative people <laughs> because mm. like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I am constantly wrestling myself on like wanting to be, you know, the best adult functional adult I can be and also preserving my personality and creativity along the way. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a major struggle when I went through my early days of, trying to get the medications right. It felt like once I was the most productive, I also was a robot and I had no more personality, no more sense of humor, no more creativity. I could not create at that point because the medication had taken it away. And so I always have kind of associated my ADHD with creativity and my creative process. 
So, you know, when you try to dial down on the impulsivity, you like as creators, it's, it's, I think it's even a little harder (laughs) because you want the impulsive, intrusive thoughts to come in because that's your inspiration. You see something, you're like, oh my God, and your brain takes it and runs with it. And then you impulsively do something with it. And that's just the name of the creative game. If you're not creative, it's probably a little easier, I would imagine, to, you know, extricate yourself from the impulsivity. But, oh, yeah. And we oh, and yeah. ADHD, ADHD people tend to hyper focus when they get interested in something. Mm-hmm. So if you have an yeah. impulsive thought that's saying, hey, check out that new hobby. You should buy all the supplies uh-huh. you need for that. Oh, oh we've yeah. all been there. Yep, yep. <laughs> I have so many. I have a whole mm-hmm. office full of craft supplies that I will probably never use. And most of them aren't even opened. But I just, you know, for a week, <laughs> hyper focused and was at <laughs> Michael's a lot, got a bunch of craft supplies and then never did anything with that polymer clay. I have a bunch of felt because I was going to make a bunch of felt oh. storyboards for the English school and ah yep 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 see yeah we get these great creative ideas but uh, sometimes Mm -hmm. that executive function just makes it hard to see them through all the way or maybe we realize this isn't really for me you know yeah yeah i mean one of my hobbies that i actually stick with is uh i i do my own gel nails because oh yeah you're good at those yeah it's yeah i'll I'll show the people on here i did my new year's nice for uh, but you save a lot of money too never be able to do that (laughs) but yeah it's it's like 50 yen or 100 yen to do like i don't know my nails oh like 50 (laughs) how many dollars is that like 50 whoa yeah to do my nails because i have all the supplies and then i don't have to buy more for a long time because it lasts Mm -hmm. a long time and then uh I did my own eyelash extensions uh, before and uh, yeah, (laughs) so I'm, I I like, I like my hobbies are um, being uh, budget beauty. Yeah, it's good. (laughs) So yeah, I I feel it right now because I just cut my own hair. (laughs) (laughs) I don't do that. I couldn't do that either. I went nuts. I don't know. I just got sick of it. I got so sick of it and was like, that's it. You impulsively cut off your hair. Impulsively uh. cut off my hair. God, that's But it turned exactly out okay, how, so I'm fine. <laughs> that's how the impulsivity starts sometimes. You realize that you're frustrated with something. And mm-hmm. then the yeah. impulsive thought is the solution, you know, yes. in, in quotes. That's like, the uh, easy solution to the problem. Yeah. And oh, if yeah. ADHD people love one thing, it's something easy. Yeah. Like <laughs> we do, we love with a single step smooth sailing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just I used to color my resistance. hair. Like I would just be like, I want it to be purple, and then I, you know, and then I want it to be Make black, so. and I would change my hair, and then I would be like, I'm tired of my hair, cut it off. Like, but when I made the decision <laughs> to cut my hair, and when I actually cut, got my hair cut, was like the it's usually the same day. Or I go in and I sit in the chair and I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, just cut it all off, you know. And because oh I mean, you guys have known me for a long time. My hair yo-yos. <laughs> yep. And yeah. 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 You've been through a lot of styles. Yeah. My husband hates it because he likes <laughs> long hair, and every time I come home and my hair is cut, he's like, "What? Why?" <laughs> <laughs> Because Ugh. you I haven't made sick of it after a while. It's like looking at exactly. the same thing all the time. We get bored. And we get really just bored. Never... Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We like exactly. new and shiny. And uh, yeah, impulsive spending, I think, definitely goes along with that. New and shiny objects. You know, you see something online and mm-hmm. it's like, oh, that will make me happy. Then I'll be happy once <laughs> I have that thing, you know, and then small online purchases just like end up fucking you over a little too hard and yeah amazon can be dangerous you get those you get that great dopamine yeah. hit when you click buy now Ooh, and then sweet. you get a dopamine yeah. hit when you're like you know you get it in the in the mail and then you get a dopamine hit mm-hmm. when you open it and then the dopamine yeah. kind of goes away after that you know so yeah it's done novelty is <laughs> yeah. worn off mm-hmm. <laughs> although i, think I do people just i do do a lot of my shopping online anyway just because i, I can't I can't get the motivation to get out of my house when it's cold. Oh, it's very convenient. Yeah, you just if you mm-hmm. if you have an impulsive purchase thought, it's a lot easier yeah, to dangerous. make that just looking online. Yep, than standing in a store sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've just had to 
you know, because I, I'm on a financial diet now and I've just kind of had to force myself to just put as many barriers as possible in between the time when I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, I want to buy that and then actually do it. Like I used to just buy things yeah. when I wanted them. You know, now I'm like, okay, don't save your credit card on your phone. <laughs> you know, don't, <laughs> don't have any, don't have any easy things. You know, you got to enter that yep. password. For a while, I even deleted a couple of shopping apps on my phone because it was just too tempting to browse. But I've also kind of just completely changed my relationship with shopping in the last, like, mm, I don't know, a few months anyway. So mm. I don't really, I mean, part of that was from just realizing I, realizing I did not have enough money to keep this spending habit up. And then the other part <laughs> was just realizing, like, you know, I, I've just been trying to do a lot of inner inner work and, and realizing, like, you know, that's not going to make me happy, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's not. What, what does make me happy is relationships and being thankful, you know, showing gratitude for what I do have. I don't need any new yeah. shit in my life. So yeah. impulsive <laughs> spending has definitely gotten better for me recently. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it took a long time I to have the uh, external motivating force of my husband to uh, not impulse spend. So <laughs> that's good. Yeah, because that's unfortunately good. for you, you're you're in control of all of your own money. See, I have my own money. I wish someone my... would take that away from me. <laughs> yeah, I, I have my own small amount of money that's like my my play money, and then uh, my husband, you know, everything. My husband can see my credit card. My husband can see everything. So if I go nuts, he's gonna be like, mm -hmm. "Dude." No, what it's good to have doing? someone keep you accountable. I think we yeah. need someone to keep us accountable. Mm -hmm. We should not be doing anything ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's not true, but it's good to have people that can you can talk to about mm -hmm. it or like mm -hmm. if you are by yourself, like, you know, one thing I'll do is I, I really will try to just take as long as possible to buy something. If it's like if uh, I keep thinking about it, yeah. I keep thinking about that Facebook ad, like, yeah, that deodorant might change my life, you know, <laughs> uh, just wait, wait 24 hours before you buy it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was obsessed with uh, these this pair of uh, La Boutin shoes, right? Which they're Ooh. really expensive, right? But these these particular this particular model was just gorgeous, and I was like, "Ooh, I really want to buy those. Should I buy them? Should I not?" Because I have yeah, my you deserve I have, it. I have my play money, like that, like I said, I have my play money, and uh, so I could buy them if I wanted yeah. to. But then, so I was like, ooh, I could just hit the button now. And I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to go find a yeah, store. I know uh, oh, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to go find a store and I'm going to try them on. Well, that's smart. And when Good. I tried them on, they were very uncomfortable. And so I didn't buy wow. them. What, what there a fucking surprise. Aren't those, yeah. aren't those like high heels? <laughs> yeah. Well, cause I you're mean, probably used to mm, heels though. Yeah. I dance in, I dance in heels. I wear them on stage you all got, the time. You got to have that stage presence when you're singing in front of 40,000 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I found, yeah. I found a, uh, a, a, uh, used pair of, uh, shoes Ooh. that look like Louboutins, but they're not. And they have like this bomb padding inside of it. And Ooh. actually they were brand oh. new, but they were sold at the secondhand shop. And so I tried those on and oh, they're great. And so are those the, the ones with red bottoms. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And these are like the, the copy of that. And they were five, oh. uh, they were for like $5 at the, at the secondhand shop. And so I was like, oh, nice. these are padded. This is nice. They're not brand name or anything. They're just a knockoff, but I like, they were so comfortable. And I was like, you know, oh. that is one thing I will say. Comfort if, if is you everything. Are someone, <laughs> Yeah, like, you know what? Shopping is fun. Don't feel guilty for loving shopping, okay? It really is fun. It's like, I love the thrill of the hunt. Like, I love finding a bargain. <laughs> and so I think that's actually, uh, that's a solution I will offer for if you're someone who loves to impulsively shop and you're like, I just can never give that up. It gives me too much joy. You know, just go to a discount store. Go to like a, you know, a thrift shop. Somewhere you where have, everything is cheap. You've been like that since high school too because you and I used to like go to all the shops and like you would walk into the to forever 21 and you would go straight <laughs> to the like bargain area clearance, like the clearance, clearance yeah yep. you and it's mm -hmm. like do not pass go you had like blinders on you like clearance 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 like i don't think it's you ever so bought anything for price 
You know, I have found things. I, I found jeans at Old Navy on the clearance rack for 47 cents. I mean, you never know what you'll find. It's so thrilling when you find a bargain <laughs> like that. I love it. <laughs> That's a dopamine, baby. Bar- yeah. Bargain hunting is the ultimate dopamine hit because you, like oh, you yeah. said, you have to go hunting for it. So that's another variation or a spin on the whole, you know, make it hard for yourself because it would be so much easier to just go to the nice new part of the rack with the stuff that they just got in that has all the sizes, you know, meticulously put in order. So, you know, exactly where everything is, but no, on the clearance rack, you got to shuffle mm-hmm. oh, <clears> and you yeah. got to like, find what you need or want and and you know maybe you won't find it or maybe you will and maybe it'll be a great price you know well like, and if you're yeah. impulse buying a pair of jeans for 47 cents i don't think that you're doing too bad exactly no that's not exactly. the worst impulse so just, buy yeah just buy cheap shit mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but not too much cheap shit because you can seriously spend a hundred dollars at the dollar store guys like <laughs> Like, it's I know. possible. It's, I think it's it. Well, at least where I live in Illinois, the dollar store is now a dollar twenty five. Everything's a dollar twenty five. Did it go up where you guys? Yeah, it is here too. Yeah, you know, the Dollar Tree. Yeah, yeah. It's I was like, still one hundred yen here. Oh, yeah, you're so lucky. Like one hundred and ten mm. with tax. You know. So I don't even go there anymore. Mm. I'm like a dollar twenty five. Are you kidding me? No. That's a twenty five cents too much. Uh, <laughs> too damn. Well, high. why do they call yeah. it the dollar store if it's not a dollar anymore? I know. They're going to yeah. get that all the way up to $1.99 and then realize they have to change their name. Yeah. Yeah. To the $2 uh, okay, so what about, <laughs> what about impulsive eating? Should we talk about that at all? Yes, I mean, we I used should to talk with about that. that. <laughs> I used to struggle with that big time. And that's also another yeah. kind of relationship with myself that I've analyzed, you know, lately. But, mm-hmm. like, when I was... Yeah, for years, I would just kind of eat whatever I wanted, you know, if I'm out and I'm like, mm, yeah, I, think, I feel like an ice cream right now. I would just do it, you know, if I was not, I mean, unless I was with the kids. Well, then I would buy them ice cream, too, probably. You know, there's always <laughs> there's always some excuse you can think of like, yeah, 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 let's just yeah. do it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's not a, it, it, in, in like we were talking about earlier, impulsive uh, drinking or impulsive. Someone offers you a drug you've never tried, you know, like, God, when yeah. you have ADHD, it's hard to. It's hard to say no sometimes. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Like I, I've had to be really mindful about any type of impulsive eating because um, I already have an endocrine disorder that basically makes you gain mm. weight. Like, like it is so easy. I could just, you know, smell something and gain weight. I swear to God. And it just, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's frustrating because you know, people will think, oh, you know, she's really, she's big. So she must eat a ton of food. And it's like, well, not necessarily. I mean, I'm just Mm -hmm. as guilty of of impulse eating as everybody else. But I think that that, you know, low margin of error is what keeps me on a straight and narrow path. And that's what, you know, kept me doing diets that were really hard, like the ketogenic diet. And I stuck to that one for like a whole year, which is really hard to do for a lot of people. And yeah. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I did lose weight on it. It's just extremely hard to fit children into a lifestyle that has that. Cause you can't, you can't put them on it unless they're epileptic, you know? So Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah, it's just not, I missed having, I missed having fruits. I missed fruit when I was doing keto for sure. So it's definitely, it's tough. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, It's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, I just get this like, because I don't like, I don't really like sweets, so that's good, you know. But I love cheese. That is oh, good. That is good. I love Lucky. cheese. And so, like, <laughs> I, I'm pretty good about you know, not eating things, but like over <laughs> during Corona, <laughs> kind of went okay. <laughs> and so I would like get this thought like I want Indian curry. And then, like, mm. I would obsess over it. Oh, God, wow. curry does sound good right now. Mm. Sorry, it does. Yes, <laughs> but Annette, Annette, I remember you've had you haven't been. Uh, I just remember you years ago telling me if I could just take a pill and it would mean that I didn't have to worry about eating food all day, I would do it. And I was like, Oh, Are you I would, me? I and I'd be food. 
I would I would totally do it and I would be th- so thin. <laughs> I, I just food is so enjoyable to me, you know, and so I think that's one of the reasons I used to struggle, especially when I was baking. Oh, my God. It's like somebody's just oh, like, wow. here, try this cookie. You know, sure. You're not going to yeah. say no. See, I don't like cookies. Right. Really? So. I, I, no, I can totally I just don't, relate. I get mm-hmm. I, I get a, I get it, uh, annoyed that I have to stop something to eat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so funny. I can relate to both sides. I can relate to both mm. sides because like very much like Ellen, I love food. It is enjoyable. And I also like making food. So like, you know, it's it's fun to cook. It's fun to experiment and try new stuff. But also like Annette, I commonly forget to eat meal after meal after meal. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, to the point where all of a sudden I'm just like shaking because I haven't eaten maybe mm. all day. I might, it might be dinner time and I just realized that I never had breakfast and like, oh, oh crap. This is, you know, I know that, you know, the one meal a day lifestyle is really trending and everything, but shit, I didn't mean to do that. So <laughs> I just <laughs> accidentally oh. trendy. Yeah. Accidentally yeah. trendy, accidentally having blood sugar attacks, whatever. And mm-hmm. <laughs> just yeah. all of a sudden you get so hungry and you're like, oh my gosh. And then you feel like you have to eat everything in one sitting and you kind of do because that's like your only meal then. And that's the point of the one meal a day is you just eat a day's worth of calories in a single meal. And, and the point is that basically your stomach shouldn't be able to hold enough calories for you to sustain a large weight on. Mm-hmm. So it depends on what you're so eating, accent- though, because if you if you sit down mm-hmm. and you are so hungry and you just eat a yeah. pizza, you're going to easily eat more pizza than, you know, more mm-hmm. calories than you needed for that yeah. day. You got to okay, be careful so, what you eat. Yeah, you have to be careful about what you're eating. And but like, yeah. I'll do this weird thing yeah. where I'll be like, oh, I'm hungry. And I'll go upstairs and I'll open the fridge and I'll just be like, I don't want any of this. And then just close it and not eat. <laughs> I can relate so hard. I just did that earlier today, like literally two hours ago. I was like, oh, hungry, open fridge. Nope. Either that or I don't want to make it right now. That's another one. too. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to have have to do those dishes. I go, I put a little bit of like milk or almond milk in my coffee and I'm like, there's a couple calories. We're good. (laughs) There you go. Yep. Uh, Yeah. 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 But yeah. Mm. Impulsive, impulsive thoughts. I think, yeah, I, I think a lot of people struggle with that in terms of food, though, for sure. You know. It's oh, I think to, so yeah. too. It's like, hard to avoid those, especially when you yeah. like, like I said, it's like it comes into your head, and then you're like obsessing over it, like it's all you right. can think about. Right. Then it's hard to control that impulse. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, listen to your body. Make sure you don't get too hungry, and make sure you're not eating too much either. I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Balance. Do you, yeah. Do you guys ever like you're driving somewhere and then you like are like I could use really use a bean burrito or like oh, chicken nuggets <laughs> and you like change where you're going completely just oh, to yeah. go yeah oh yeah yeah in fact oh in fact we were talking about this before the podcast but I was talking about impulsive driving this happens to me all the time where I'm headed somewhere and then I'm just like mm, I'm gonna take another way. It, 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 like there's there's one road in particular near me that I can I depending on like if the light is red or green I'll go one way to get to the other town or the other way and I don't know I just kind of sometimes I'll just be like mm, no nah, I want to wait you know take the left way you know or the right way it's just, it's just <laughs> an impulsive thought every single time I never know which way I'm gonna go <laughs> that's funny huh. yeah <laughs> and you don't decide that based off of traffic it's just like some random really. thing in your head it's just oh, yeah. a a thought it, it, it's just a feeling i guess i don't know mm. like you know how you're supposed to you know how you're supposed to listen to that uh s- small like, what do they call it the small quiet voice inside of you you know and yeah uh, <laughs> i'm trying to practice being more mindful in my life you know and i'm trying to listen to myself more my own voice you know mm-hmm. and so I, I i don't know maybe that voice is also the voice of impulsivity <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it is. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Gotta, but yeah, a lot of times I'll just be driving and I'll suddenly be like, no, nope, I want to go a different way. It happens all the time. Hmm. This is a classic struggle in literature, too. Who's the narrator? Who the heck is narrating this? <laughs> <laughs> That's something I've never thought about. Do you do the do you do the like uh the constant narration in your brain thing? 
Like your whole day is narrated your voice in your head. Um, no. You would think that mine would be, but oddly, no. Most of mine are pictures and everyone, but <gasps> also I one? do do the narration sometimes. Like it's really weird. I don't like, I still, I, I think I need to analyze it to figure out what it is that I use narration for. I think maybe I'm using it as a tool for something. I don't know, but I'll use both. And most people say it's either one or the other. And I'm like, no, seriously, oh, I do them both. I'm running dialogue. <laughs> So Money Annette, dialogue. what does your brain oh. what does your brain sound like to you like most of the day? My voice. Like are, yeah, yeah, and you're just thinking about what you're doing. You're saying, "Okay, I'm walking mm-hmm. over to my desk now. I'm going to sit down." Like you literally are like thinking these thoughts. Yeah. Like, wow, and when I'm so making wild. lists or something, or like the things I need to do for the day, I hear myself telling myself that I'm doing that. Like That's I don't so see pictures of me doing any. Like I don't have visions of me like oh, I need to go to the store. And like, I, I don't see myself going to the grocery store. I just hear in my own voice in my head going, <laughs> okay, we're going to the grocery store and then we're going to do this and we need to do this. It's just a running conversation like in my head. That is so interesting. Yes, yeah, so for me, huh. I will picture a rotisserie chicken at the grocery store. It's like, oh, good idea. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do some. And I'd be like, like, I that. should like, buy a rotisserie chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no there's no voice <laughs> the only time i can hear that voice usually is if i'm very high <laughs> or or sometimes oh i don't know just just in the right mood you know or, or and it's like i can hear myself like ellen you need to get up you need to stand up and walk over to your bedroom or you know it's like i can kind of it's like i tell myself that but yeah normally i'm not always thinking about what i'm doing yeah i have very oh vivid dreams but oh, i have a running dialogue yeah really huh. your brain is so fascinating i love it yeah it's, a, it's yeah. really messed up man that's pretty but cool like, <laughs> like mine's just a big bag of random my brain is a sack of randomness. i love yours too oh my god yeah. it's so weird because you know i'll picture stuff that i need like if i want to have a bagel in the morning I'll, I'll just picture a bagel with delightful cream cheese all over it or something um mm. except then randomly like if it was a bad idea, like I might have an arguing voice that comes up and says no, and just that's it, just one word, just only one word, no, just no, no. bagel for you, um, <laughs> no bagel for you. It's too fattening or whatever. Like you know, but oh. just I only get the no, and then I understand intuitively. Oh yeah, I, it's probably not a good idea because of this whatever reason I'm going to assign to it, and then like I'll go and I I also have kind of like a sarcastic shithead mode inside my brain where I'll be doing something stupid and I'll realize it and I'll make fun of myself by narrating it in Morgan Freeman's voice and <laughs> oh Morgan Freeman lives in your head that's awesome uh, you have sometimes uh, but yeah. like it could be any voice like if I if I am about to say something that's like sarcastic or snipey then it might just sound like a really dumb voice like, <laughs> like something like that like inside my brain it's not my own voice it's almost it's in fact it's never my own voice and what really gets me is when I hear like five or six competing thoughts at once and they're all like the audible kind and I'm just like wow. no <laughs> like it's just instant overload <laughs> that's fascinating I I don't yeah. think I ever have more than one voice at a time in my head. They're <laughs> they go one by one. Mine compete. I need I need like David Attenborough to narrate my life, you know, like all those nature documentaries. Like, will the mother awesome. make it to school on time to get her kids? <laughs> <laughs> Which that talking about school, an interesting thing. How did uh, a lack of impulse control express itself in your childhood? Because for me, Ooh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, let's talk about like this. for me, I interrupt conversations even now, but I've I have learned, I have like taught myself to be more aware of it. But like people who 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 tour with me or anything, they always say, Oh, she's a talker, she's a talker, she's a talker. <laughs> like that's what you hear about me. And mm-hmm. a lot of that is just because I'm having these thoughts in my head and they just kind of like it's word vomit, basically. And I, I, I'll get uncomfortable with just silence because I already have the voice in my head. And so I just start like talking because it's always talking here. So mm-hmm. why would, why isn't everybody always talking? It's, it's kind of weird, but <laughs> yeah, like my dad would always tell me when I was a kid, we'd be like, 
at home or at a restaurant, anywhere. He told me at least uh, 10,000 times, and I'm probably not even in the ballpark, okay? But he Mm -hmm. would literally always tell me, think before you speak. Mm. Use your brain before it comes out your Mm -hmm. mouth because I would say all sorts of stupid shit. And uh it's same. <laughs> no. There you go. I don't think I've been I, I don't know. I definitely have struggled with that, you know, with like the interrupting thing for sure. Or like if you have a yeah, cuz you know, with our brains, if you have a thought and you don't say it, you're going to forget it. You got to get it out. <laughs> or yeah. it'll keep recycling in your head until you get it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has oh, to come out your mouth. Too. You have to yeah. poop out that thought right out of your mouth. That's where it comes out. Yep, yeah. you do. <laughs> it's true. Take I a think big, that... steamy dump, a verbal dump. And all I see yep. is South Park when they were doing the reverse eating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I feel like that's my life. <laughs> that's ADHD right there. Diarrhea yeah. of the mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, seriously. We can't, we can't help it sometimes. We just get excited. We have that impulsive thought that's like, oh, yeah, say that thing, even if it's not what they're mm-hmm. talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what are some things that you do in your life that are like tips for uh, trying to control impulsivity? I'll start. Um, one thing I did in school to keep myself studying or and also with my private bank account that I talked about earlier is uh instead of like impulse spending i made a game like a my own mental game and uh so my game is how much money can i save in a year and it's like that doesn't well, sound last really year to me last year i saved this much <laughs> well last year i saved this much this this year how much can i sp- can i save and just when i feel impulsive i just kind of like look at my bank account and i'm like no <laughs> you know i'm, I'm yeah. that kind of sh- and i wish that kind of shit worked for me i just don't like challenges <laughs> Yeah. Or so if you're like that, if you're a competitive person and you can compete nope. with you do yeah. competing with yourself, I mean that's one technique that I use. That's great. That'll work but, for a lot of listeners. I'm or sure. compete yeah. with another ADHD friend. Oh, there you go. There you go. Then there's built-in accountability. Yeah. <laughs> Who can save the most money? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Both people come back the next day and was like, I failed. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a that's a problem with me. I don't mind losing. I'm not really like a super competitive person by nature, and so if I have a challenge for myself, let's let's see how good you can do this. I have so much grace for myself. If I don't do it, you know, it's like it's okay. You tried, or maybe you didn't try, but I still love you, me. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I wish I could I channel need to be that a little sometimes. More... <laughs> Yeah, I need to be too. a little more competitive with myself. You know, maybe I need to hold myself to a little higher standard, but I don't know I need how to, to do that. I need to love myself a little bit more and give myself more grace. Oh, yeah, yeah, me it's too. Good to, it's, it's good to have a balance, though. You know, if you give yourself too much grace, then whew, that can lead to trouble. Yeah, yeah. that's how true. How about you, Jen? <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> I just, I I don't know, like... I I feel like I just analyze my life and try to figure out where the breakdown is happening. Like, just like I did um, earlier on this week with my poor husband and our closet, where I basically just had a breakdown, said I refuse to fold laundry because it's just like I have to fold the kids laundry and that's already a challenge enough. And then I I have no more mental load from, you know, this. I love it. Second you drew a line in the sand. Of, yeah. Yeah. Of folding, folding my folding own laundry. So, you know, yeah. break down for a minute, you know, then we figure out where, where is the problem spot? I identified it full. I identified folding and then like, okay, fine. I'll just hang all my stuff up. And it was so much easier to do. Plus then everything's like in my line of sight and it's easier for me to dress in the morning. So this is actually like a really legit like solution that's been impacting other areas of my life too. So, um, but I've done this before where like I've had a problem with something like maybe it's, I always bought um, a Starbucks or something on my way to a certain place like work, for instance. Um, And I'd, I'd be like, all right, well, I'm spending too much money. What can I cut out and find out lo and behold, the Starbucks is 
what's really killing me. So then, you know, I'll come up with a, a solution like, okay, I'm going to drive the other way instead of going into this parking lot that's facing the Starbucks. I'm going to go into the other parking lot instead. So I don't have to see it when I come in or something like that. So I'll just try to find the point of failure and then make a workaround. There you go. That Life is hack. Good. That's really good. I like that. Yeah. We all, we all have to recognize what kind of boundaries we need to set on ourselves so that we can nip these impulsive thoughts in the bud. You know, it's like, I'm not mm-hmm. even going to entertain that because I can't, you know, I've got that boundary now. I'm not even going to drive by there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. with that said, how are you going to wrap this up in a pretty little bow, Jen? <laughs> oh, God, I know, right? Like this <sighs> impulsivity in general is such a sprawling topic. It it just it really does pervade your entire life. So mm-hmm. I think the big takeaway here is if you've got a problem with impulsivity, if you've got some kind of failing point in your life where you're like, man, I constantly do this thing and it's like my everyday gotcha moment, then trace it back. Is it impulsivity? And if it is, how can you correct that one problem? Is there a way that you can short circuit it? Could you make your the other aspects of ADHD work for you? Like sometimes, you know, like sometimes you can do like, oh, hey, well, I'll just, you know, not focus on this thing and focus on this one instead and just interrupt the thought. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's just it's one of those things that I think is has it's got to be one of the most galling parts of ADHD is that you can't control those impulses, but yet you have to try. So I feel like it's really important to have like a substitute for whatever the thing is, you know, like if you're a person who has impulsive thoughts to pick your scabs, maybe, you know, like, Mm, yeah, I I think I actually read this. I'm not just making it up, but, you know, they (laughs) they recommend having (laughs) they recommend having something to replace that behavior with not just ignore the behavior you know if you have that thought like i gotta i gotta pick that scab you you can't just not do anything because then you'll just keep thinking about it but if you say every time i want to pick my scab i'm going to focus on doing some deep breathing techniques you know then that can totally sidetrack your brain get you off that thought and you know do something else yeah and that's why they used to that's why they used to let uh kids who are autistic or had uh impulse control uh issues use the spinners in class oh the fidget spinners yeah yeah fidget yeah, yeah. Spinners. so they had it they had something to focus on exactly yeah, it I was, think it's it, great yeah. yeah yeah it can cut down on the tension of of being there and being uncomfortable um and yeah. they they do that with adhd too like um one of my kids has a wobble seat because they you know they need to do the wobble thing while they're sitting down and so mm-hmm. they got a they got a wobble seat in there and corrected so yeah. many problems. <laughs> like God, maybe you maybe know. us grown ups need wobble seats. Maybe we need those I too. Do. Yeah. I absolutely need a wobble seat. I'm sure that everybody who has watched our YouTube channel just watches me constantly fidget about and like move all over the place. <laughs> Even though I'm medicated, I can't stop it. It's an impulsive thing where, you know, my nerves and, and electricity, it's all it's all firing mm-hmm. and I just I've been literally doing yeah. this the entire podcast because I'm oh yeah. yeah rubbing the your thumb on your finger <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. I'll do something like that where I'll rub, rub fingernails or like you know get an get my foot kind of bouncing or something like that um yep. because I can't easily take the um the tension of just sitting there and I feel like that's one of the most um, trying aspects of actually doing a podcast and doing a video component is that I knew to begin with that I would want to fidget and that I would be probably the one that moves the most. And sure enough, I am. Um, (laughs) But but yeah, so anyway, impulsivity. Yeah, whatever (laughs) whatever kind of accommodations people need, I think, you know, it's fine. And don't forget to channel it and be creative. Let your creativity flow sometimes. Sometimes sometimes your creativity can get you through on these things. But if you feel like you have a big problem with impulsivity, not just something that you can figure out yourself, not something that you can easily be like, oh, here's the fail point and here's going to be my workaround. It is best absolutely to speak with a therapist and have them help you make a plan because you can actually make targeted plans for your daily life. Maybe you need a schedule 
to be in a certain place at a certain time and not impulsively go off trail and, you know, do sightseeing. Yeah. Maybe you need to set alarms on your phone that remind you you have to be at a certain place at a certain time. Maybe you have to have alarms to tell you when to start making dinner instead of I keep watching my crime docuseries or whatever. <laughs> like, well, and you don't yeah. forget that a therapist is there to hold you as a c- accountability issue. So your That's therapist right. yes. will hold you accountable and ask you how you're doing and ask you how you're doing. Like, so just making a plan and by yourself is very difficult. But if you have a therapist or a trusted friend who can hold you accountable, you know, yeah, especially really... if you feel like mm-hmm. you might even have impulse control disorder, you know, if it's so bad that it's taking over your life and you just feel like mm-hmm. you have no control, like definitely seek out a professional, you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I highly recommend therapy. I, I've been loving it, you know, um, everyone should get the help they need. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's just so much to talk about with impulse. Like you said, it it controls your <laughs> it covers every aspect of your life. I mean, it. It's mm-hmm. directly connected to your thoughts and your thoughts are what create things and make changes yeah. in your life. Yeah. And so, I think that's why we yeah. need to emphasize actually going through the therapeutic component of treatment and not just seeking medication for ADHD, because a lot of times we focus on getting medication and and people have legitimately struggled to get their medication. And that is a very valid struggle. And it's just not the only thing to think about. So once you get your medication, don't stop going to the therapist. Keep going and like work on some other stuff, you know, impulsivity mm-hmm. being the number one offender for us, probably. So, yeah. you know, and I mean, therapy, that. I know th- therapy is definitely, you know, a, a, unfortunately, it's a privilege, not a right. And so if yes. you can't afford to get that kind of help, like just find a good friend, you know, find another human that you trust that you can talk to anyone, you know, we can't do this ourselves. Mm -mm. That's an excellent point. Excellent. point. Yeah. Okay. So to wrap this up, we need grace for ourselves, but not too much, but not too much. (laughs) So, (laughs) So, you know, don't be the fuck around and find out person all the time. And if you are only give yourself so much grace <laughs> so mm-hmm. just a little bit of fucking around you know yeah yeah, yeah mm-hmm. exactly so either way um, you'll find out either way you'll find out and i guess we're gonna have to find out what the heck we're talking about next time when we all convene here on a wednesday evening to do this podcast i'm going nowhere with this anyway <laughs> um so <laughs> I'm going to shut up now. It was great talking to you all. We love you. And Basel Tough. (laughs) Basel Tough. Bye, ladies. Bye.